charge. They've got uh, quite sol solid strategy uh, and a good team ahead as well. But I feel like we can definitely beat it because we. I think DCL will be back today, right? Yes, hopefully. And, yeah, hopefully. And we've got a solid team built by the, uh, Frank Lampard. So, yeah, hopefully we can get first win of the season. Yeah. I love that, Chow. And you mentioned before, you know, Frank Lampard and Frank Lampard's team. There's a lot of spirit, spirit of the blues. Spirit of, spirit blues. Spirit of the blues. And we yeah. saw that last we've season. Spirits. We've got yeah. spirit. Is that one of the reasons you love this club so much? Exactly. I mean, the spirit is the first thing. I mean, it was 10 years ago when I come to when I come to the Goodison Park. Yeah, I, I saw the atmosphere. I saw the fans here and saw the Everton players play playing, which was fantastic. And they've got spirits through and through and uh, and uh, always bounce back uh, from uh, from like uh, one one new defeat or two new defeats. So that's the spirit we are looking for today as well. Even though we are probably one new or two new down, we can definitely fight it back. Just like last season's Crystal Palace game. Yes. We will get it, we can definitely get it, no worries. Well, we want to do it today for you, Chow, as well, seeing as you're here at Goodison Park. Oh, yeah. We want to see that happen. Now, do you have a favourite player or anything like that, Everton? Well, yeah, my, now my favourite players were, yes, uh, Tom Davis. Oh, yeah, Yeah, Tom. local boy, yeah, local yeah, boy. local boy, a bit like fashion icon as well. Yeah. I love him. Uh, and because I, I play a bit like midfielders when I was at uni, so I admire this kind of players with good skills yeah. uh, with good feet actually so yeah he's he's really nice i i used to like follow stephen naismith a lot and oh, legend. He, he's legend solid player uh scores scores three against uh, chelsea yeah. seven years ago yeah it was the best afternoon i've had yeah I love that. I tell you what, Chow's got the knowledge on the blues here. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And as we say, West Ham today. Yes. Can we get a cheeky score prediction from you, Chow? Well, I would definitely say 3 1. Yeah? Yeah. Just like the first time I've been to Goodison. Yeah. 3 1, that's it. Yeah. We're going to win it. Yeah. 3 1, just as we beat Southampton for Chow's first game. Let's hope that comes through. Yeah. Chow, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much. And no, we no, really no. hope you yeah. enjoy the game. Yeah, thanks very much. My pleasure. Up the toppies. Yeah. Come on, let's, let's go. <laughs> Back to you, Julia. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we would take Chow's scoreline there 3 1, wouldn't we, Barry? Shell for that now, yeah. <laughs> I think we'll be in for a good afternoon there. So you stay there, Barry. I'm going to get some more team uh, score predictions from down here in the fact. I tell you what, do you young boys want to come up here and give me a... Oh, we're squealing a little bit there, aren't we? Okay, what's your name? Tyler. Calgum. Go on then, give me your score predictions. 3-1 Everton. Oh, another 3-1. What about you? 2-1 Everton. 2-1 so Barry. Would you take those scores, yes? I think... I think what's your name? I think, you're, I think I agree with you, mate. A 2-1 win, Callum. Right, well, I'll tell you what, next time, if you're correct, come straight back and see us in the fan zone, yeah, and then we'll get you to maybe give us the lottery numbers as well, because Barry agrees with you. Brilliant. Anyone else want to give us a quick score prediction? Hiya there. What's your name? Kevin. And what do you think? Is it going to be a win for the Blues today? 3-0. Well, would we take that fans over? That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Well, again, I'm coming back to you for the lottery numbers, if you're correct. 3-0. Everyone's feeling quite positive. That's the vibe I'm getting. You, I feel that at the moment, Barry. I think although, you know, the win is yet to come. No, it, but we, we, we're getting better. We've made some great signings late in the transfer window. Good performance against Liverpool. Great, two great goalkeeper performances in that game. So, yeah, I, I think there's goals in today's game. And I think we'll score more than them. I wouldn't be surprised if, it, if both teams do score. And there's been a lot of changes again over the summer. What have you made of Frank Lampard's recruitment that's gone on? Well, as I say, the, uh, the, the late signings were brilliant. I think Patterson's really come on. He's like a new player. So the back four is looking, back five is looking really, really good. He's obviously strengthened the midfield. Gay, to see him coming on in the derby was brilliant. We just we could have just done with I think a goal scorer and that, you know Mope brilliant happy with that but there's not many I don't see many goals in us at the moment but that might improve. Brilliant. Well, fingers crossed. I think you'll be right. Now I'm just hearing we've got the team news, so I'll come down here to the big screen and we can run through how Everton are lining up today against West Ham. Here we go then. Let's find out. Lining up for Everton today, number 15, Asmir Begovic. Number two, James Tarkowski. 
Number three, Nathan Patterson. Number eight, Amadou Onana. Number 10, Anthony Gordon. Number 11, Damari Gray. Number 17, Alex Awobi. Number 19, Vitaly Mikalenko. Number 20, Neil Malpe. Number 27, Adrissa Garnagay. And number 30, Connor Cody. That is how the Blues are lining up. We can take a look at the substitutes bench. Eldin Jakubovic, Michael Keane, Dwight McNeil, Abdullah Decore, Seamus Coleman, Tom Davis, Ruben Vinagre, Solomon Rondon and James Garner as well. OK, that is how Everton line up today. West Ham then. Let's have a look how the visitors will be lining up. Number one, Lucas Fabianski. Number three, Aaron Cresswell. Number four, Kurt Zuma. Number five, Vladimir Kufal. Number eight, Pablo Fornals. Number nine, Mikel Antonio. Number 11, Lucas Paqueta. Number 20, Jared Bowen. Number 24, Thilo Correa. Number 28, Thomas Suchek. And number 41, Declan Rice. That is West Ham starting 11 right there. I think we've got the substitutes for you as well. Alfonso Ariola, Number Gianluco. Number Samaka. Number Manuel Lanzini. Flynn Downs. Maxwell Corne. Craig Dawson, Angelo Ogbana, Syed Benrama and Emerson is the substitutes there. Of course, David Moyes, their manager. I tell you what, I think Barry Horn is still here. Let me run around the corner. What do you make of the Blues starting 11 then? Is that what you thought today? That's the team I would have picked. Absolutely, yeah. That's, that's nailed on for me. That, that's, that's our best team at the moment for me. No Calvert-Lewin, which is um, yeah. a, 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 not really a massive surprise. I, I didn't think he'd be ready. But um, he must be close. Um, but yeah, that's that's how, that's the best team we can put out, in my opinion, today. And a good bench as well. The bench looks strong, so um, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's something that's been missing, hasn't it, in recent seasons? The looking to, to the bench. Change the game, yeah. yeah. Well, there's lads on there now that can do that. Garner, I'm looking forward to, to seeing him playing for Man United. So yeah, all good. Yeah, I want to mention that Man United game, because just a reminder, it's a 7pm on a Sunday. That's a weird one, isn't it? <laughs> There's obviously going to be some bizarre reasons that I've never known it. And it's, again, it, it doesn't help any fans that have got to travel, does it, and work on Monday morning. But that's the Premier League, just take whatever they throw at you. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you as well, just quickly before we let you go, about Everton's defence recently. Because there's been so much praise for... Connor Cody coming in. You mentioned Patterson before, Vitaly Mikalenko, James Tarkovsky as well. They seem to have come into Everton and know exactly what it means, uh, and they, they don't shy away from a bit of a fight, do they? The two of them, they were bulletproof. They're experienced, good old-fashioned centre-backs. They know what the game's about. Um, and for me, there was no risk involved with signing either of them. Two great signings. And I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence that the two full-backs are playing better with them two inside them. Yeah, and I was just going to ask you about Bramley Moore seems to be coming along so yeah, fast now. Fly, I tell you what, doesn't up. it just seem to be flying up now? It's really exciting. But how, if there was something you could take from Goodison on the last day to keep, is there anything, if you could steal it, what would you take? Uh, I've, I've already got my souvenir from, that, from when they redid the Bull and Joy. I've got some, um, some wooden flip-up seats in my garden. So I'd have another couple of them. So you've got them in the garden. Do yeah, you yeah, use yeah. them? Yeah, of course, yeah. When you have a barbecue, brilliant. <laughs> Would anyone else like some of the seats for their garden? <laughs> I think that's a... Who, do they know you've got them? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a long, long time ago, by so the way. they do now. <laughs> it's, for, no, it's from when the park end was done, I think. Brilliant. That is abs I mean, it'll be a sad day, won't it, on the last game of Goodison? It'll be, I'll be very sad, but at the same time, I've never wanted to leave Goodison, but... Seeing it going up and the location and the, the, the assurances that will, it's been designed to keep the atmosphere, I think it's time. Yeah, definitely progress, isn't it? Go on then. So I think you agreed with Callum, didn't you? You're going for a 2-1. Two, 2-1 one, two, one victory, yeah. 2-1 win. Can Neil I, Mope to get off the mark. I was going to say goal scorers. He's going to get two. Neil Mope and great. Oh, there you go. You heard it here for, first. Barry, it's always a pleasure to have you in the fan zone. Thanks so much for your company today. My pleasure. Massive cheer, Enjoy Barry the Horn. Game. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got loads more to come up in the fan zone. We're going to speak to the armed forces that are part of the tribute to the Queen and higher or lower as well, our competition. So I'll be looking for some contestants for that very soon. A bit more music for you now to keep you entertained and, and warm in the fan zone if you're going to have a dance. It's going chilly, isn't it? Uh, here she is again, Meg Birch. Welcome back to the stage.
Hello, good afternoon. Did a full 180, crazy. I'm thinking about the way I was. Did the heartbreak change me? Maybe, but look at where I ended up. Cause I'm all good already, so moved on. It's scary, I'm not where you left me at all. So, if you don't wanna see me dancing with somebody, don't, 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 don't. And if you wanna believe that anything could stop me, don't show up. Don't come out, don't stop caring about me now Move the way, hear yeah, that sound Yeah, you're tearing it all around Aren't you the guy who tried to hurt me with the word goodbye Though it took some time to survive you I'm better on the other side Cause I'm all good already So moved on, it's scary I'm not where you left me at all So, if you don't wanna see me Dancing with somebody If you wanna believe that Anything could stop me Oh, don't show up Don't come out Don't stop caring about me now Walk away, you know how Don't stop caring about me now Hey, hey, cause I'm up, up, out, out Up, up, don't stop now oh, Up, up, out I'm not where you left me at all So you don't want to see me dancing with somebody If you want to believe that anything can stop me Oh, don't show up, don't come out Don't start caring about me now Walk away, you know how Don't start caring about me now So just walk away, walk away. Thank you very much. Enjoy the game. Thank you very much. Thank you there. Thank you. Thank you there. There we go. Thank you very much to Meg Birch there for entertaining us in the fan zone. Uh, obviously football, as we know, was paused last weekend as a remark of respect for Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, so today, the WSL gets underway, and it means the Blues women's side are actually away. They're facing West Ham as well. That game is a three o'clock kickoff down south. And this week, the new manager, Brian Sorensen, of course, his first game in charge of the Blues, has been talking to the press so we can find out what he's had to say this week ahead of Everton's game at West Ham. later than scheduled but how are you feeling on the eve of walking out the first game in charge of Everton? No, I'm really, yeah, just really looking forward to get started. It's been it's been a long uh, pre-season, I think, but uh, yeah, excited, uh, happy. I uh, think we're in a good place, so just can't wait to get going. Obviously, it's a huge season ahead, not just uh, for the clubs involved, but for women's football in general. There was you know, a record-breaking WSL season last year, the hugely successful Euros in the summer as well. How important is it to keep that momentum going and keep making giant strides forward in the sport? I think it's super important. Um, yeah, the, the growth in, in the women's uh, uh, world and in the soccer in general, you know, it's, it's, it's one big growth. And then the Euros showed that I think the people are ready for it also. So we need to, yeah, uh, work work hard and, and show that we have really you know, quality. Um, I think 
we try like the way that we want to play like to show uh, attractive football that people want to see um, and uh, you know hopefully the fans and, 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 and the general people will back us up and yeah keep the growth in uh, yeah ongoing. There you go, Brian Sorensen ahead of the women's game in the WSL today at West Ham. Good luck to them. Fingers crossed for three points on the road. Uh, okay, I think we're going to have a bit of higher or lower now. Would anyone like to be my contestants? <gasps> Straight away. Okay, fantastic. I've got three. Are any of you related at all? Yeah. No. Okay, we might have a problem. I only need two. Uh, uh, uh. Are you, can you play as a team? Are you playing as a team? Do you know each other? Yeah. Or are we just making friends here? <laughs> You two are best friends. What about you? Oh, well, that's awkward. That is rather awkward. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Do you two boys want to play against? Okay. Yeah? Okay, follow me then. <laughs> We've got our contestants here for higher or lower. Let's make sure. I'm going to come round here because I want to make sure you can see the big screens. If you stand here for me. So if you come round here, that's it. Fantastic. Well, let's find out your name then. What's your name? Noah. Noah. And who are you playing with? John. John, okay, we've got John and Noah against Savannah. Savannah, fantastic. Who wants to go first then? The two boys are going to go first. All right, all you have to do is look at the cards on the screen for me and you tell me if you think the next one's going to be higher or lower. So let's get started. Here we go. Okay, you can see it's most substitute appearances in one season here. So, fan zone, you're going to help the young contestants out here because some of these players might be slightly before their time. Okay, here we go. So, we've got Danny Canamateri on 21 appearances. Gerard Delefeu. Now, do you want me to ask the fan zone for help here? No. no? Oh, you're confident. What do you think? Is it higher or lower than 21? Lower. Lower. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah? Okay. We're going to go for lower for Gerard De La Feo. Let's have a look. It is 18. It was close. You've got a point on the board already. All right, then. Victor and Ichibi. There we go. So do we think it's higher? I'm going to ask the fan zone to help you out. Is that okay? Fan zone, what do we think? Higher or lower than 18 appearances? What are we going for? Higher. They're all saying higher. What do you think? Higher. You're going to say higher. You've been swayed by them. So it's on you, this fan zone. Here we go. Brilliant stuff. Two points there. 29 appearances. All right. Tom Davis. Substitutes appearance, substitute appearances in one season. Do you think? Should we ask the fan zone for a bit of help? Okay. Higher or lower than 29? You're saying, look, you're convinced it's lower, yeah? What are we saying, fan zone? Lower. Okay, it's up to you two, though. Lower. Lower. Yeah. You're going to go with fan zone. There we go. Lower. So we need it to be lower than 29. Yes! Brilliant work here. Three points on the board, and you're on to Wayne Rooney. Oh, I think this might be close. What do you think, fan zone? Higher or lower than 17? Oh, I think this is an even split here. It's a bit of a split, so I think it's on you. Go on. Lower. You're saying lower than 17. Let's have a look. Is it lower for Wayne Rooney? Oh, I knew it would be close. But don't worry, you've still got three points on the board. And here's your final card, Jermaine Beckford. So what do we think then? Are we saying higher or lower, fan zone? Help them out. You're saying higher. What's everybody else saying? Everyone's looking blank faces. <laughs> They're saying lower over there to my right-hand side. What do you think, Jermaine Beckford, higher or lower? We'll both say it in the same time. So three, two, one, lower. Lower. You're going for lower than 20. Okay, for four points, let's have a look. Oh, my goodness. Not to worry, you've still got three points on the board. Give the guys a round of applause. That was very, they was really hard ones today. 
Savannah, right, you're going to get your card. So you've got three to beat. Do you want the fan zone to help you a little bit as well? Right, fan zone, you're going to help Savannah. She's playing on her own. Let's have a look. Your first card for you. Right, Yakubu, 21 appearances. And then he's up against Dominic Calvert Lewin. So, what do we think, Fanzone? Do you want me to ask them for some help? Higher or lower? They're saying lower. As I say, don't listen to them two. They're playing against you. <laughs> You're going to go lower. Okay, Savannah says lower for DCL. Let's have a look. If it's lower than Yakubu's 21. Oh, it was close, but you got it right. You got a point on the board. Brilliant stuff. Okay, Anna Valencia there. Appearances. Fan zone, what do you think? Higher or lower than 20? Higher. higher. They're saying higher? Higher. Savannah says higher. Let's have a look. Is it higher than DCL's 20? Oh, 16. Not to worry, not to worry. Still plenty of points. All right, Alex Awobi, what do we think? Fan zone, higher or lower? Okay, you're saying, one of you saying higher, one of you saying lower. <laughs> what do we think? They're saying higher over there, if that helps. They're saying higher. Higher. Okay. Savannah's going with you here, fan zone. She's saying higher for Alex Awobi. These could not be closer, could they? Deary me. Again, not to worry. All right. Stuart Barlow, fan zone. What do we think? Higher or lower than 15? I tell you what, these are really difficult. So what were we saying, Fanzo? They're saying higher, but it's completely up to you, Savannah. Higher? Higher. We're going to see if this is higher. We need this to be higher to get some more points on the board. Yeah. There you go. Up to two points. Right, this one would draw it, actually. Okay. Duncan Ferguson. What do we think, Fanzo? Are we saying higher or lower than 21? What are we saying, fan zone? Higher. They're saying higher, you're saying higher. It's up to you, though, Savannah. What do you think? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Go on, then. Give us a higher or a lower. Oh, what? honestly, what, anything you think, whatever, you go with what you think. Lower. 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 Savannah says lower. Here we go. So this could draw it. Oh, I tell you what, Savannah, they were really difficult cards today. I have got a match programme for you, though, for playing along. Give Savannah a big round of applause. Thank you. And here you go, boys. You have won a stadium tour for two people at Goodison Park. So you can go with each other, no problem, and a match day programme. Who, when you can get to go in all the bits that normally security say you're not allowed to go in. So where would you like to go and have your pitch taken in the changing room? Who's your favourite player? So whose seat are you going to sit on? Anthony Gordon. Seamus Coleman. I think they're good picks, aren't they? Give the boys a big round of applause. Here you go. Here's your prize. Fantastic stuff there. I love it with the little kids' faces when they come up to play that game. It's absolutely brilliant. Things got off. Um, as we know today, we've got a very special tribute ahead of the match across the Premier League on the 70-minute mark today. You'll see a picture of the Queen on the big screen. That's at all games today, so you're invited to join a minute of applause for her 70-year reign. And ahead of that, we will also have uh, some special guests on the pitch with the players and the managers today. And I can welcome some onto the stage now. We've got um, veterans of the armed forces here. If I just welcome to the stage, if you can give them all a massive round of applause. Hello there, welcome to the fan zone. Okay, do you want to just give us your names, please? Matt, Paul. Paul. Billy. Billy. George. Matt. Matt, brilliant. Now, Matt, I think you're a standard bearer today. Is that correct? So just talk through people, what, you know, what they'll see today. Well, basically, uh, we walk out, uh, get the nod to uh, lower the flag, raise the flag, 
undo your minute silence to respect the Queen. And to be involved in that, it's you know it's quite moving for people to watch. But you know, for you, how do you feel ahead of that? If it, it's such a thing, like you just uh, carry on doing what you'd have to do when you're in the armed forces, you do these things. That's it. Fantastic. And uh, the way the country has come together this week. It really has been emotional seeing all the footage of people lining the streets and what's been going on. As a mem former member of the armed forces, then how does it make you feel seeing that? You must be so proud of the country this week. I've been very proud. Uh, unfortunately, I was unable to get to London, so what better things is it's going to lay a today for Her Majesty. Yeah, completely. This is another way, isn't it, for anyone who hasn't gone to London to stand in those queues. And you understand why. It's a, it's a bit of an ordeal to stand in those queues. But this is a lovely way for football fans to pay tribute to Her Majesty today. It certainly is, yeah. yeah. But what's the one that's you with the other clubs? I hope we can do it in proud as well. So let's be cheer for the Queen, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Have any of you ever met the Queen? Did you get to meet the Queen? Oh, I met uh, Prince William uh, in the club for about three quarters of an hour talking to him. Uh, yes, because he was here to see the work with Everton in the community, wasn't he? And he's now the Prince of Wales. So do you think he'll do a great job? Yep, without doubt, yeah. Yep. Brilliant. And I just love the way this week that the country has come together. And we've just seen everybody, you know, it doesn't matter what your background is, you know, what the different faiths have been in the queue. It's been just sort of incredible. It's almost been something that we've never, ever seen before this. Yeah, well, that's what the UK is all about. It's just everyone coming together. You know, Great Britain. But not just one sort of segment of the, the country. It's all over the place that come together. Unite. United Kingdom, isn't it? It definitely is, and I tell you what, many of you will have seen David Beckham queuing up as well, and he's got, you know, some praise for that, but he said he didn't, you know, he just felt it was something he wanted to do, and talking about football, he said, you know, to represent his country meant so much, and I just thought that was a great moment. Do you know what, it was a great moment where he just said, no, I want to wait with everyone else, because everyone's equal, you know, everyone's equal. Yeah, I think some people started saying, did he, you know, drop himself into the... But he didn't. He was there all night. I think you could tell he looked quite tired by the end of it. I think anyone gets tired when they're in the queue, but no, it's, it's, this is part of history, do you know what I mean? And uh, long live the king. Yeah, because obviously we've got King Charles now. It's difficult, isn't it? Sometimes we keep wanting to say Prince Charles, don't we? I mean, how do you think he's going to get on as king? He's come across so far, you know, he's a man of the people. He's been meeting everyone in the nations, hasn't he? Yeah, he's coming across brilliant, isn't he? He's shaking hands with everybody. Like, yeah, to me, Brill. Yeah. Brilliant. And, and how impressed are you that, you know, football has decided this weekend that everyone on the 70 minutes is going to do the round of applause as well for the reign of the Queen? Well, that's, that's the least he can do. Uh, I think it's brilliant that they've all talked to us. And hopefully it'll be good today. And Matt, it's a special moment as well, isn't it? Because... We're unlikely to see a 70-year reign ever again. What she's done is remarkable, isn't it? It's uh, brilliant what she's done, and uh, I'd like to see to, uh, King Charles uh, following her footsteps. Definitely. I mean, uh, obviously, we'll have all that to come as well, won't we, with the coronation? I, I just want to ask you as well, I think you're involved with the Nosley Veterans Hub as well, is that correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a brilliant place where everyone gets together once a week and all that, and it's like getting back into the barracks, you know, where you're having your naffy break. And we all share our little stories, have a banter, and it's, it's about community, you know, love it. It is. I, I was lucky enough once to go along to the Christmas meal. This was pre-COVID, and it, and it was brilliant. I got invited along, and you all were having a fantastic time. <laughs> well, that's what it is. We create memories, you know what I mean? Every day is a new day and all that, and it's what you create that day. So you think back and look back just on the good times, you know what I mean? And the veterans will bring a lot to the community. It's great. Yeah, and the support from Everton there for that as well, to keep that running and keep it involved. I love the banter. The banter is brilliant. Fantastic. We can get more information if you look on uh, Everton and the community's information on Nosley Veteran Hubs. Fellas, thank you so much for your service, first of all. Thank you for your attendance today as well. And we look forward to seeing you as part of that really special tribute later. OK, thanks very much. Thank you. Let's give them a massive round of applause. We'll see them on the pitch a little bit later on. As we've said earlier, just so you are aware, 
The managers will lead the teams out. There will be silence. There will be a national anthem ahead of the game today. And then on 70 minutes, you're invited to have a minute of applause for the 70-year reign of the Queen. I think now we can go back inside, Goodison. I know it's raining, but Sarah's inside there and she's got a special guest with her. Sarah. Thank you so much, Julia. And now I'm delighted to be joined by two really, really special guests here, pitch side at Goodison Park. We've got Steve Johnson and Jamie Oakey as well. I'm going to start with Steve. You head the disability programme with Everton in the community, don't you? So just to start with, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yep, so this is my 20th year now at Everton in the community and we have a range of different programmes to engage with disabled people uh, to give them the same opportunities as non-disabled people. Uh, so we've got 11 teams, disabled teams that represent the club. We've got different age groups, we've got female teams, we've got male teams, we've got impairment specific teams, we've got pan-disability teams. So it's all about giving disabled people that opportunity. Uh, but today we've got uh, some players from our uh, Everton amputee team. Uh, we've got six members that have been selected for the England uh, team that's going to play in the World Cup in a couple of weeks' time. So it's a you know, tremendous achievement, more than anybody else, really. And um, you know, just really looking forward to the World Cup. I'm really excited. And that is incredible. Six Everton players representing England. That's got to fill you with pride. That's absolutely incredible. Mm. And Jamie, of course, one of those. We'll get to you in just a minute as well, Jamie. But Steve, to talk with as well, you head up the EAFA as well, as well as winning three World Cups with England amputee football team. Legend. <laughs> well, yeah, that was a few years ago. <laughs> a little past my sell-by date now. But yeah, um, I, I was one of the founder members of the England Amputee Football Association. And uh, it, it was purely because there was nothing there for disabled people. So, you know, when I had my accident uh, playing football and lost my leg, I went from playing as football whenever I wanted to to being no opportunities for me. So it, it's something I wanted to change, really. So we've progressed quite a lot over the last 30-odd uh, years. And, um, you know, here we are today, you know. Well, you should be immensely proud as well. You know, football has got to be all inclusive and for everyone and, you know, for paving the way for people that otherwise perhaps wouldn't be given the same opportunities. It's, it's so incredibly important what you do. And there's a real hunger for it as well, isn't there? We were just chatting off camera before about the, the attendances you get in finals and stuff like that. Was it in Turkey or there was yeah. some 41,000 people, really, really lively, intense atmosphere. That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, we, we went to the European Championships, got to the final and we played the final at the, the six to stadium against Turkey and um, you know there's 42,000 people in there and it was just a constant din throughout the game it was an incredible atmosphere kind of thing really you know and uh, as I say you know the only time it went quiet was when we equalized in there but um, yeah it was, it was just an unbelievable experience for the players and, and staff and what have you and uh, one we're hoping to repeat you know in a, in a few weeks. Oh I can't wait for it honestly just a few weeks away as we say the Amputee World Cup where we're gonna have six Evertonians representing England, that's just absolutely class. Now Jamie, you're going to be there, you must be excited to represent Everton and of course your country as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's an unbelievable achievement, it's, you know, we've got, a, we've had immense support, background staff and, you know, family, friends, they've all supported us like this year and it's, you know, last last year in the Oros we fell just short in the semi, in the quarter final, sorry, and uh, but this year we're in the World Cup, we're hoping to take it home. I love that. That's fighting talk. That's what we want to hear. We can't wait to get right behind you, Jamie, and the rest of the lads in that England team, but especially our toffees there as well. Steve and Jamie, thank you so, so much for your time today. Best of luck when you head to the World Cup in a few weeks, and we'll be right behind you. Cheers, thank you. Up the toffees! Up the toffees. Come, on. Come on! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, good luck to the team there as well. Fingers crossed for them. Uh, that's it from inside the fan zone right now. We'll stick with us, though, because we'll have some more entertainment for you from inside Goodison on the big screen. I tell you what, I think in the last 10 minutes, the great British winter has just arrived, hasn't it? It was lovely when we all got here. I think winter's now here. So, yeah, wrap yourselves up warm. Thank you very much for your company today. Uh, just to run through again, there will be that tribute ahead of the game today. On 70 Minutes, you'll see a picture of Queen Elizabeth II on the big screens. You're invited to join a minute of applause for the 70-year reign on the 70-minute mark in the game. Beforehand as well, before kickoff, you'll see the two sides and the managers, along with the armed forces, who will be on the pitch, and you'll hear the national anthem play ahead of kickoff today. I just want to quick say a quick 
hello to Sandra from Canada, all the way from Canada today. She's emigrated there, so she used to come here with her dad and sat in the Gladys Street. So she said it's quite emotional for her to react today. So yeah, enjoy the afternoon. Have a lovely game, Sandra. Uh, we'll be back here, of course, Sunday the 9th of October at 7 p.m., for the game against Manchester United. I think it might be chilly by then, as we're finding out. So wrap up warm. We will be back here in the fan zone. Thanks so much for your company. And let's cross back to Sarah inside Goodison. Thanks, Julia. And now we're going to just have a little quick run through of those two starting 11s again for you. So for the Blues, we have Azmir Begovic in goal, of course. No Jordan Pickford for the time being. James Tarkowski, Nathan Patterson, who's been absolutely fantastic in recent weeks. Amadou Anana, Anthony Gordon, Damari Gray, Alexander Awobi, Vitaly Mikalenko, Neil Mopai, Idrissa Garnagay, and captain today is Connor Cody. And that starting 11 for West Ham as well is Lucas Fabianski, Aaron Craswell, Kurt Zuma, Vladimir Kufal, Pablo Fornells, Michael Antonio, Lucas Paqueta, Jared Bowen, Jantilo Kera, and Thomas Suchek. And Declan Rice is captain there today as well. So that is the team news for you. Just to remind everybody as well that ahead of today's kickoff, there will be a minute's silence in memory of the Queen. There will also be include uh, the national anthem will be sung and fans will be included to take part in a, a minute's applause around the 17th minute, as is the case for all Premier League games. So please participate in that and, and pay our respects. Um, but yeah, those are the team news. That's the team news there for you. We've got plenty more still coming up for you here on Everton Live ahead of kickoff. So stick with us and for now, enjoy some of the warm ups. And now someone who's had a pretty good start to the season, a couple of goals and probably should have had one or two more, but for VAR, here is Damari Gray ahead of this one. Uh, well, Damari, not the win to go with them yet, but what have you made of performances so far? Yeah, I think they've been uh, positive. I think um, over the weeks, uh, obviously we didn't start too great, but over the weeks we've built, uh, we've grew as a team. And I think uh, everyone can see the signs. Um, as you said, it's just about getting a win now. How do you take that next step? How do you take those signs you talk about and turn them into a win? Um, I think just keep doing what we've been doing. I think we've been unfortunate. I think we've deserved more points than, than we've got. But like I said, keep doing what we've doing. Uh, we're working hard in training. And I've said uh, in recent interviews that the win will come. 
like last season actually, do you feel like you've made a fast start to the season personally? Uh, yeah, good start. Um, for me it's always been about maintaining that uh, for as long as possible but you know, I'm, in a, I'm in a good space, training well and just being consistent in that and the rest will take care of itself. Yep, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Kevin, who's come all the way from the Big Apple today to watch the Mighty Blues. Kevin, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here too. Absolutely brilliant. Where <laughs> else would I want to be? I uh, love that. That's what Kevin's just been be. saying. The best place in the world to be, Kevin. Now, you've been a massive Evertonian for many years. It's Kevin Sheedy, I believe, the Irishman who's, uh, who got you invested. Yes, Kevin Sheedy, number 11 for Everton, number 11 for Ireland. Um, so as a nine-year-old, he was, he was probably my favourite player, and he was a blue and I love the colour blue too. So, <laughs> so that's what got me vested in Everton initially. And from there, I've just always loved the club. I've loved, I just love following them, highs and lows. And it's frustrating <laughs> ride sometimes, but I just love the Everton, everything Everton stands for. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's it, isn't it? We wouldn't have it any other way. We, we go through the highs and the lows all together, and it really is a magic football club. And you were actually out in the States, in Baltimore, I believe, watching the, the pre-season from the Blues. Yeah, so I knew they were out on tour, so we went to Baltimore, got in the car, and there's another mate supposed to go with me. He couldn't make it. There's not too many other Everton's. <laughs> <laughs> so I went down there, and at the best time, uh, watched the Arsenal game, met up with some, uh, I think uh, we met up with the uh, ex-pair, Ozzy was there, and... It was absolutely fantastic. Met a lot of people, and that's kind of helped me be here today. So it was, yeah. It's awesome, and we're so happy to have you here, Kevin. We really are, and hopefully you'll bring some of that luck of the Irish for us today, which you did when you were here when Everton beat Manchester United 4-0 a few years ago. Yeah, that's a good story. <laughs> it was Easter Sunday, the sun was splitting the stones, and there with my nine-year-old, who's a Man U fan. Oh! Yeah. Not and a good day for him. Not a good day, and, I, and I'm sitting there, and we're 4-0 up. And I'm loving it. The Gladys Street ends bouncing. I look down at my son, and he's he's crying. Oh, now I feel bad. So so I do I do I oh, you okay, son, or do I what do I do here? You know what I did? Ah, you're fine. Ah, <laughs> yes, Kevin. <laughs> He'll get over it. <laughs> yeah, that's the correct. We've got to enjoy them four 0 wins over Manchester United because they're not something that comes by all too often. So you did the you did the right thing it there. Happen too often. You've got to enjoy them moments. You've got to enjoy them. He'll be okay. He survived. He survived. He, survived. he, he didn't convert to a blue then, no. He didn't. I tried my best. Yeah. No, no, he didn't. I'll get on to him. Yeah, he, well, I told him when you, when you pick a team, though, you have to stick with it, so you have to choose carefully. Yeah, well, that's it, absolutely. It's unfortunate he didn't choose, choose the Toffees, but you did. And you're here today, Everton versus West Ham. Of course, David Moyes returning as well, the former manager. Uh, how do you see this one going today, Kevin? I really see our team's improving so much, yeah. and our win's going to come. Why not today? I really, really feel it. It's a good, it's a good, it's perfect weather for playing a game. I'm here, exactly. <laughs> and, and I really do feel we're going to win the game today. I just want, you know, what I want just want Everton to get on the field and go at them, give us a bit of passion, and, and just go at them, and that, that, that'll be enough. Absolutely, and you can see in the performances, can't you? Obviously, it's quite shocking to me that we haven't had a win this season, given you know the performances and there's clear sort of improvement in the squad. And as you say, today, you know, I've got a feeling myself that today could be the day. We all feel an awful lot better after a league win, don't we? We feel so much better. Uh, it brings your mood up for the whole week. You know, it's for people. You know, it's funny, funny, hard to explain to someone. Well, how do you get so upset about football? But when you're invested in it and you love the, love the club and, and you really want them to do well. It brings your mood up yeah. if it, when they win, and it brings your mood down when they lose. There's more things, more important things in life than football, but it does help you feel happy when they win. And I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Absolutely. Well, we can't wait either. We hope you guys there in the fan zone are excited. Kevin, I hope the Blues get the win for you and for all of us today. I, I hope so. But I have one more fun fight for you. Gone. I'm actually from the same V village in, in the north of Ireland as Brendan Rogers. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> perhaps I don't, won't mention him too much today. But yeah, so, I thought I'd just throw that in there because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love that absolutely. So same same village as Brendan Rogers. There, he's not too popular around these parts for obvious no, reasons. No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe convert him too. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that one. But that's brilliant, Kevin. Thank you so much for your thank time. You. And now we will hear from the boss, Frank Lampard. Frank, Idrissa Garner-Gay makes the first start of his second spell with the club. James Garner available as well. Just in terms of depth and quality, is it an ever-improving picture? Well, we hope so. And we, uh, we've recruited uh, in the window, recruited in midfield. It's an area that we focus on a lot. And um, Garner-Gay gives us experience and quality that we all know about here anyway. 
uh, and James Garner comes in at the other end of the spectrum slightly, young player with a lot of potential for the club. So no, excited to have those options, not just on, on the pitch in the starting eleven, but now we can start to call upon the bench with really good options to come on. So Connor Cody, Everton captain today at least, what was you thinking? He's a captain, you know, he's a, he's a captain, he's born a captain, I think, in his behaviour and how he's been. And uh, Seamus is always captain of this club until he decides he doesn't want to be anymore or whatever way around it is. Um, but Connor is an easy, an easy pick. And when I say that, we've now got leaders that are in the group. We've got people like, obviously, Jordan's out now, but James Tarkowski, other leaders that are coming up, younger players as well. But I think with Connor, he's got such a big influence that it was a relatively easy choice. I, I, talk, I said at the start about the improving picture. We're half expecting to see Dominic Calvert-Lewin today. He's not in the squad. Mm. What can you tell us? My, my, my choice with Dominic because of uh, the history and we've got the international break coming up was an opportunity for him to get him fit out. It was a slightly complicated injury, so we're just being extra cautious with him rather than take a risk. We want him in for the long haul. We want him to be fit and feel good for a run of games, so more of a precaution. I know everyone's excited. I get asked a question about him every press conference particularly, but at the same time we have to protect him a little bit, so hopefully after the international break you'll be seeing him. Uh, and I know from listening to you that you feel the, the performances have been there. How do you take that next step and, and beat West Ham today? Keep performing and uh, and feel and believe that the win will come. We're playing pretty well. We can always improve. There's a lot of improvement that we want, but at the same time, we're competing very well. So can we do it again against a very good team and try and get that win, which will obviously give us confidence going into the break. And that is about it from today's episode of Everton Live. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We hope you enjoy the game even more, of course. It's going to be a little break now until we're back for Manchester United, a tasty one that. But as I've said previously, Everton will pay their respects to Her Majesty the Queen and we hope you enjoy the game. Let's get the three points. Up the toffees and we'll see you soon. <laughs>